Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Many of you have fond memories of me playing Kerbal Space Program, where I used the game to, you know, teach bits of rocket science, recreate history, or just build crazy things that would explode. Uh, many of you were inspired to take up uh, aerospace engineering as a career. And, well, Kerbal Space Program, unfortunately, is no longer developed. Uh, it uh, stopped development a while back and it's mostly being maintained by a team of modders who, you know, keep the dream alive. There was a sequel, Kerbal Space Program 2. Unfortunately, that sort of uh, crashed out in its development, spent too much money and is stuck in early access with most of the features never being developed. So now we have a new team creating a spiritual successor where you will be able to live out your Kerbal dreams in the way that we always imagined and hoped. This is Kitten Space Agency, created by Dean Hall, Rocketworks, and a number of people who were involved in either modding or creating the original Kerbal Space Program. One of the team that's involved is uh, Harvester. Yeah, Philippe, who created the original Kerbal Space Program as a side project, which essentially eventually consumed the, uh, the company he was working at. So Kitten Space Agency is being designed from the ground up to be this your simulation of everything that we want from a spaceship video game. One of the problems with Kerbal Space Program was that it was built on top of a game engine called Unity. It was designed, and Unity is designed for easy game development. It's designed to handle things that people do in everyday life. Things like, you know, first person shooters. That means the scale of things in it are designed for regular humans. But space is big. Space is mind-bogglingly, unfathomably huge big. Unity would use 32-bit coordinate systems, single precision numbers that had a precision of about one part in 10 million. That meant if you put the planet Earth into Unity, it would have a precision of about one meter at the surface of the Earth. That's not great, because we want more accuracy than that if we want to wander around on Earth-sized planets. And then if you blew it up to the, like the scale of the solar system, things would get really out of line. So they had to have all these complex coordinate transformations so that you know, different sections of space were scaled in different ways and they had to transfer things back and forth. So for this, the developers are creating a specific game engine called Brutal. Brutal is using 64-bit coordinates, right? Double precision numbers all the way through the stack. They've got all sorts of features to help them handle the, the transformations and stuff that are needed to correctly generate large procedural planets and everything. And I'm very glad that they are starting out by creating the underlying technology because that's what they didn't do with Kerbal Space Program 2. This thing is going to be moddable from, you know, from the start and hopefully... Even if the developers of this stop being interested, the modders will have an easy time continuing. So right now, you can now go and download this pre-alpha demo from their website and you can donate. I think that it's great to donate to this project. Uh, this stuff doesn't come for free and it would be great if this would be available to anyone that wants to learn aerospace. So, you start with four spacecraft in orbit around the planet Earth. You have potentially a whole solar system to play with, depending upon how much graphics memory and what texture resolutions you want. You can control this right away. It comes up in manual mode here. And by using the W, A, S, and D keys, you can fire the rocket the little thrusters, the reaction control thrusters, to turn it in any direction. That's great. If you want to cancel out the rotation, you'll just select Null Rotation and it'll stop. But of course, once you're in that mode, if you try to actually activate the rotation, it will stop you from doing anything. So now, say we want to change our orbit. Well, we can actually go into our little autopilot section here, and there's a bunch of different buttons. If we want to raise our orbit, we want to point prograde. So in the orbital velocity section, we'll select prograde. It'll turn around. There's three buttons here that are kind of important. They adjust the rate at which you turn. They are also... They basically adjust how aggressive the reaction control thrusters are. So strict keeps it within a very, very small, you know, accurate pointing. Balanced sort of reduces it and relaxed is if you're in deep space, there's nothing nearby, your orientation doesn't matter. That'll give you bigger dead zones and use a lot less propellant. So now we're pointed forwards along the orbit. So, how do we fire the engine? Well, we can light up the engine using the Z key, or and the X key will shut it down. So, 
uh, we'll see down at the engine here, it has a thrust to weight ratio of 13.4. This thing will accelerate at 13 Gs. It also has a delta V of uh, 1,361 kilometers per second. This is very much like the Expanse fusion drive, right? This is Epstein drive technology. And right away, yeah, you can see our Apple apps is rising ridiculously quickly. There's a 3,000 kilometer Apple apps. If I zoom out on the map again, you can see that I've already raised the orbit up quite significantly with that very short burn. You can adjust the thrust using the uh, the cursor keys, the up and down arrows to change that. If you're and, and the autopilot will perform a lot of maneuvers for you. Now, there is the moon out there. We can go to the moon, so we'll go into the transfer planner, select a Hoffman orbit transfer. We're going to be transferring with rocket, going to Luna. And we are going to calculate. And so it will create, it's choosing the, our little orbit here, it's choosing the least amount of velocity to get there, right? So let's create that and let's set that target as the moon. Now, it's not quite going to be great because if we zoom out, it's going to choose the least amount of velocity to get to a lunar encounter. But that means it just gets inside the lunar sphere of influence if you really want to get to the moon, you want to get this as close as possible. So we can actually manually edit this node by clicking on it, right? If we, here we go. And so if we're going to go a little higher, I can just increase the prograde velocity by a bit. There we go. It's going to get us closer. So we're going to use that burn. Now, if I want to do this, I can manually select positive on here. It will point me along the orbit. And then I can follow the countdown. It says 240 seconds or whatever to when we're going to burn. Or I can just click auto and it will do it for me. Moreover, if I hit warp, it will time warp to me. So there is time warp in this. The time warp is controlled by the comma and the period or full stop keys. Just like Kerbal Space Program. Unlike Kerbal Space Program, when you're firing the engines, you can be doing so in time warp and it will work just fine. So there, the autopilot is running. It's going to tell us to start burning in 22 seconds. It'll tell us to burn for 18 seconds and it gives us a delta V of 200, sorry, 2512 meters per second. Yes, this is all metric because spaceflight is done in metric. Just live with it if you can't understand it, right? It's just magic numbers. These are kittens. Don't worry about the numbers. There we go. Wow, that is bright. That is like a fusion drive. And look at the sun setting there in the background. Just perfect. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. And this thing is going to cut off with great precision. Bang! One meter per second, which is not bad given that it was accelerating at 134 meters per second, roughly. So that now puts us inside the sphere of influence of the moon. So the next thing I guess we want to do is clear the burn. So you can just delete the planned burn. And then we can go over to the moon, cl double click on it, move in, and we'll actually start a capture burn here just by clicking on this with the left mouse button. We've selected the moon and we can just manually do this burn. We could ask, we could use the tools, but what we're really going to do is we're going to slow down. So that's prograde. We're just actually going to fire the engine retrograde by clicking the minus button or holding the minus button. There we go. So there we go. That's that's going to bring us down to 13. Let's get a little closer. There we go. So that'll put us around the moon. And again, we've got this number in here, so I can just click auto and warp. And we'll be flying away from the Earth below us. Where's the Earth? The Earth is here somewhere. There's the moon. <laughs> the Earth is there. So the Earth and the moon uh, and many of the planets, they have textures. A lot of the planets are still placeholders. They don't have textures. They don't have terrains. It's kind of hit or miss. But the actual final game, they're planning on having not the real solar system because this is a solar system that has spawned cats as the sort of or sorry kittens actually as the dominant intelligent species the planets will be a little bit smaller than earth and the solar system so the distances are smaller and things can run a little more quickly kerbal space program was roughly like one tenth the size of the solar system this is going to be closer to maybe half the size so we'll make things a little bit more manageable 
a little easier for people that just want to casually play around and fly kittens around in space. And who doesn't want to fly kittens in space? I mean, you, did you know that the US Air Force, I believe, actually tested flying cats in zero G to see how they would try to land? Maybe it wasn't the US Air Force, but it was certainly using US Air Force aircraft. Very useful science to do these kind of things, of course. The part, by the way, in the game, they're... I think the developer of Restocked in Kerbal Space Program is one of the teams involved. They, uh, you know, they're looking for sort of clean, simple part size, uh, designs. A lot of the parts in Kerbal Space Program 2 used things like uh, reflections, physics-based rendering and stuff to make them look shiny and great when they were displayed in blog posts. But in deep space, that didn't work quite as well. Let's bring ourselves down. We're going to land. We're coming down over the surface of the moon. In fact, maybe we could try landing on the moon. So let's let's watch this do. We'll do this manually, right? So this might take a little bit longer. So I can just hit the null rotation and relax if I want to save uh, delta v here. So I'm manually adjusting the simulation speed. One of the problems, of course, with landing on the moon when you have this level of thrust is that your deceleration is going to be kind of ridiculous. There we go, we're, we're here, so let's actually go retrograde, strict, and I've actually paused the game here. And we'll go into map mode, you need to go control rocket if you're going to fire the engine in map mode. So now we're firing, I'm going to reduce the thrust using the cursor key, and then fire the engine. So this is a much more reasonable thing, we're only accelerating about 1G, maybe Maybe even less than that. So the apoapsis is coming down. I can throttle up the engine if I like. I want to more or less land in the sea of something. It's probably the Sea of Tranquility, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm not a lunar expert by any means. I always have to look these things up. So it gives you the impact point. And I'm just going to cancel this. Any We want to land on the light side. Oh, we'll land near that crater. Right about there. Excellent. Okay, great. So we're coming around. And so I'm going to run the acceleration forwards. And... Do, do, do. You want to be careful we don't accelerate too much and smash into the ground. I think that's us getting plenty close. Let's fire up these engines. So, we're orbiting, we're moving at about 1.6 kilometers per second. You, you know, if you're used to Kerbal Space Program, you might want to put these things in different places. Uh, if you're used to Orbiter, you might want to put stuff in different places. Right now, as you can see, we have, like, procedural terrain and everything here. But we don't have, like, a lot of the scatter, or the rocks and stuff on the surface. So I'm firing up these engines a little higher so that we'll get down. Now, I'm currently firing an orbit retrograde mode, but I probably want to switch to surface mode. There we go. So we've reduced our speed to about 100 meters per second. So I've switched basically to surface reference mode, which is important obviously because we are landing on a surface and the surface is rotating relative to the stars. So again, this is like coordinate systems. You kind of need to understand these things if you're going to be flying things around. This altimeter is in radar mode for now. Okay, fire up the engines again. It's great that we can throttle this thing up if we really need to. A little bit of concentration here, look at that. I'm going to fire my engines upwards. Now, here's the thing, I'm going to be side-slipping across the surface, right? So I want to make sure that I'm not going sideways too quickly. But you can understand, you can see where the terrain is. There's no landing legs and stuff here. Uh, yeah, coming down, you probably want to point backwards and use those thrusters. I don't think the thing will explode if you hit the ground too fast, but nevertheless... There are some physics... Oh! Okay! We crashed something there. I think we might have fallen through the surface. Well, so much for my comment about 32-bit versus 64-bit math. The great thing is, though, the crew doesn't have far to go if they want to get out the spacecraft for landing. Let's throttle the engines up. 
and just watch this thing go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You can watch this thing just like the Expanse, leaving the planet at ridiculous speeds. So there are other places you can go in the solar system. We have a whole map here. Let's just cut that out. So uh, we can teleport using the debug menu. So we can go into... Do, 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 do. <laughs> now we got to remember where it is. There's set show set orbits debug. So we can go into orbit among many of the planets. One of the nice ones is Io because it's orbiting Jupiter. You probably want to set a decent altitude here. Hopefully that will work and set that orbit. So now if we come back here, we are orbiting Io at 100 kilometers. And that means that if we let this time run forward for us, we should be able to see Jupiter somewhere. So Io is one of the few objects in the solar system that has a texture, but I don't believe that it has working terrain at this point. Still looking for where Jupiter might be. Jupiter obviously has some fantastic clouds. And in fact, if you watch Jupiter in the map, you'll see that the cloud layers rotate at different speeds. So look, this is this is just a demo, right? This is a long way from the real game. The best thing you can do here is play around. You can actually practice flying between space, uh, you know, uh, celestials. You can practice doing gravity assists. The tools are kind of there to do this. You can't build rockets at this point. You can just about see the animations on the uh, the kittens. There are some mods already that are replacing the kittens with Kerbals. But um, I'm hoping that we've got this thing off to a good start. I'm hoping that this foundation will lead us to the full glory of what we want to see in Kitten Space Agency going forward. We want to create the tools that are needed to inspire the new generation of rocket scientists, right? I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.